What's going on? Welcome to another edition of Gen Sports Corner back at you for November 27th, 2023. Uh, you already know what time it is. Uh, like, share, subscribe. Uh, go to the YouTube channel. You know, do all that good stuff. And I just dropped a video um, recapping the fight between David Benavidez and Boo Boo Andre on Saturday night. And then we're going to talk about the Eagles, obviously. Big win last night. I was out there raining, freezing cold, don't matter. We out there and we we got that ass. Pause. All right? Great win. Jalen Hurts just running into the end zone and just... Let's go, man. Look, that that game was just so frustrating. It was such a roller coaster ride, just up and down, up and down. Just so many mistakes in that first half. So many times that they they look to throw the game away, but yet they stayed persistent and got back into the game. Couple of takeaways from this. Number one, the offensive play calling has to change. It has to improve. Brian Johnson, and, and I was talking to my to my cousin about this yesterday, watching the game. You ain't gotta leave. You ain't gotta go. You can still hold the clipboard. Somebody else needs to call the plays. Keep it in house about who's gonna do it. It could be Nick Sirianni. It could it, it could be whoever. Hell, it could be um could be Jalen Hurts. I, I don't care. But Brian Johnson, he's not ready yet. He's not ready yet. It it, it would probably be better having Nick Sirianni, Sirianni call the plays and then having him slowly ease his way into play calling so that he can pick it back up next year because it is painfully apparent that we're getting out coached early in these games and we're having to, one, make adjustments in the second half and then, two, the team is having to overcome the mistakes that we're making earlier in the game in terms of play calling. That We, we have to change that. You're coming out, pass, 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 three and out. Run the damn ball. It's not complicated. You come out pass happy when you know before the game Lane Johnson is out and Jack Driscoll is stepping in at right tackle for him. Why would you make it more difficult for him off off rip from the first play having him drop back going backwards in pass protection versus running the ball and allowing him to get downhill Put hands on people. Be physical. Get him into a rhythm. Get the defense tired. Then you go to to passing. Okay, like get hands on these. Get physical first. All right. Stop trying to 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 play this finesse game and try to outsmart people and and try to re, well stop trying to reinvent the wheel. Football is a very simple game. If you have the best O line in the game, even with the replacement right tackle. Run the effing football. Easy. Then you open up the pass game with play action. Then the play action means something. doesn't mean anything if you're doing play action on the second, third, fourth, fifth play of the game when you haven't even run the ball yet. The threat of the run from the previous games is not sitting fresh in those defensive coordinators' minds. They're looking to see what are you going to do in your first 10 to 15 plays. And if you're coming out pass happy, okay. We already have what we're thinking about sitting back in, in, in a uh, zone shell and not allowing you to beat us over top. Now you just confirmed our thesis by coming out and being pass happy. You're making it easier for us. For a defense that is already pretty good, you're making it even easier for that defense. So you just made this game a lot harder than it had to be. And thank goodness that we're just so, so much of a juggernaut on offense with Jalen Hurts and the things he can do that we were able to get back into the game, but it don't need to be that way. It doesn't need to be that way. Second point. Defensively, I loved what Sean Desai was doing in that game, making the adjustments as we went through it. Because Josh Allen, was he got hot and he stayed hot in that game. However, the Eagles, the, time, the blitzes and the timing in the game when they're calling these blitzes really made the difference, especially in key spots. You look at that. One of the last plays of the game for the Bills on offense in overtime where he missed that throw to Gabe Davis. Well, the pressure caused that to happen. He let go of the ball before he wanted to and before Gabe Davis even turned his head around when he was going through his route. And that changed the game. You give you give him another half a second to a second. 
don't send that that all out blitz. You don't send the house. He's able to sit back there, take a half a second more, and then Gabe can turn his head around. Now when I throw it, easy touchdown. It's the little details that make a difference. And hell, <laughs> that changed the outcome of the game in overtime. It changed the outcome of the game, literally, right? So the little attention to detail, second point. Third point, Jalen Hurts. Jekyll and Hyde, even being Mr. Jack, uh, Dr. Jekyll and Mickle, Mr. Hyde, the first half, just having moments where you're just like the interception and then just moments where we're going three and out and you're wondering what the hell is going on. And then in the second half, he comes out looking like Joe Montana, comes out looking like John Elway, comes out looking like Michael Vick running around. Like, you don't want to get into that habit of having to win like that, but damn, if that man just don't know how to find a way to win. He just finds a way to win. And it's infectious. The rest of the team follows his lead. And you just see that there's just no panic. Even when they're down, who was it, 17-7, 21, 14, 24-14. Even when they're down 7 to 10 points, there's no panic in this squad. Right? You can't teach that. You can't coach it. You either are or you aren't. And we are right now. And that's why we're 10-1 and one and we clinched a playoff berth. First playoff berth clinched in the NFL this year. Eagles, right? So, yo, great win. Great win by them. Just very, very impressed. And, I mean, look, now it's about really making the adjustments because you want to go into the playoffs hot. You want to stay healthy, one. And then, two, start making the adjustments. See the mistakes you've made that you got lucky enough or fortunate enough to be able to overcome and, and make the adjustments. Correct those mistakes. Correct those issues. Um, that's that's what these next, I'd say, three to four weeks are about. Correcting those issues. Getting some wins. And then the last one or two weeks is about resting guys and and staying healthy. Or if you're hurt, getting healthy for the playoffs. I'll give you guys a little bit of time. Just make sure they, they stay sharp enough before they get their rest before the bye week. But that's that's what the game plan is for these next uh, these next four, five, six games, right? So let me know what you guys think. Let me know what you guys think. But I was very impressed. This was a hell of a win on primetime TV, man. And let me tell you something. Them Bills fans, look, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't mind the Bills fans. They're cool. They're not obnoxious. They're like uh, upper state New York version of us, really, in terms of the fan base. Just straight up out there. But, like, they, it's, it's like, we fit together very well, I would say, the fan bases. But they had a long drive home last night, boy. It was a long train ride home for some of them dudes. It was raining outside. It was dreary. And winning made it all worth it. That rain felt like good. It felt so good, man. But that rain, when it rains, it pours. And they <laughs> that rain was not fun for them Bills fans. But, you know, whatever things that they did wrong this game, and they did a lot of them, they got to make, make those adjustments themselves because I do like the Bills. I want to see them do well. I want to see them win their first Super Bowl, just not not against us. That's where I stand with the Bills. But great win for the Eagles. Very impressed, and I can't wait till next week. Got the 49ers coming up next week. And I'm going to tell you what, no matter what we do, no matter how many games we win, it's, it's never good enough. Oh, they beat the Bills? Oh, they, 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 missed, they missed the pass. Oh, they, they, they beat the Chiefs? Oh, you know, Scantling, he should have caught the ball. They didn't. It, that's, that is how slim the margin of error is in terms of winning and losing. Because for every play that we we got uh, a gift on, there's plenty of plays that we gifted other people. We just didn't pay for it yet. All right? So I just love the resolve and the resiliency of this team and the energy. And as BG said, you want the ball? You want the ball first in overtime? Don't matter. Deuces.